How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be talking about how I completed the fifth inning program and if you watch my previous uploads you notice how I uploaded a, a video on Conquest and how to complete the program quickly. Well I was able to complete the entirety of the program at least until up until 300 program stars which will allow me to unlock the Lou Gehrig which will be included in this video. This first beginning part is just some highlights from the event run that I was able to play. I mean, you do need to win 10 online games, whether it's Battle Royale, Ranked Seasons, or Events, or a combination of the three. I talked a little bit about that in my previous video. I also talked a little bit about how to complete the Conquest turn-based missions, and it was not very it was very important for me to complete because I wouldn't have been able to unlock the card as quickly as I did if I wasn't able to do that Conquest. The 30 program stars is a must-have, and as well as the voucher. I also talked a little bit about that previously. Uh, one quick really good way to gain program stars after completing all the moments, after completing all the conquests and the, uh, the online games, a good way to get these program stars is simply by playing the computer, nine inning games. If you score a couple runs and uh, limit the opponent to a few runs, it, it accumulates program stars by how many XP, how much XP you earn during the game. And I think it's per about four and a half innings you play, you earn one program star. There are also other ways to do this. I mean, you can play Road to the Show and earn program stars, franchise, March to October, as well as uh, going to play now regular games and player lock a certain pitcher or hitter in the game. I do uh, I do recommend using someone with a quick delivery. I used uh, Steven Strasburg and player locked him a few times, but doing that only allows you one program star if you are able to pitch the entire game. And keep in mind, if he doesn't really have the most stamina, so if you give up a run, then it's unlikely that you're going to pitch the entire game without the CPU taking the guy out that your player locked. And uh, then you just kind of have to finish out the game with, with the rest of the team. Whichever team you pick, whichever team you're going up against, you can uh, kind of just finish up the game and earn one program star. It will take about 10 minutes to do this. It's a little bit of a trick, but at the same time, just playing the game in Diamond Dynasty, playing nine inning games will allow you to unlock two program stars at a time. And that is largely how I was able to accumulate all the program stars once I reached about 250. I will be explaining to you guys why I was able to go from 220 to 250 in this video, simply because I was able to get the wins needed. I also had a Battle Royale run going at the same time. so. I'll, uh, I'll explain to you guys what I mean when we get a little bit closer, but so far in this run, these opponents have been very good. I did get a little bit lucky throughout this run. You need some luck whenever you're going 12-0 in Battle Royale or events, and uh, events you get one loss at least, so that can be a big help. At the same time, some things were going against me as well. I don't really know what happened on that uh, double play ball, but luckily with the very next batter, I was using Bruce Suter, and he was my go-to pitcher in this one. I was able to get a second ground ball for the double play right there. That's very important, uh, especially in the bottom of the third inning. He had a chance to walk this game off. I mean, he was the home team. This opponent is a very good player. He messaged me on Twitter afterwards saying he was a big fan of the channel. That's always nice to hear, and uh, it's nice to see some sportsmanship from some, from some opponents who know who I am or know about the channel. So that's that's awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into this next game. I think I was about 8-0, 9-0 at this point in time. But uh, each game you play in these events, you unlock an additional program star uh, in additionally to the 10 wins, unlocking you the other 30 program stars. So just by simply playing the game, you will accumulate program stars. But I guess playing against the computer, getting yourself out after scoring a few runs, getting some base hits, and then just running into outs uh, will be a lot quicker than, let's say, playing against an online opponent. Uh, that's just something that I experienced, but uh, in this game, I was able to get the bats going a little bit early. I was able to uh, hit a home run, a no-doubter there with Ralph Kiner. Some first gameplay I'm uploading on to the YouTube channel with Ralph Kiner. I did use him in this event, and he was pretty good for me. I mean, he, there he had a clutch base hit with two outs. It was a no-doubt home run for a three-run shot. Definitely solid, but uh, yeah, I didn't really upload too many, too many at-bats with him just because... I just recently picked him up from the High Choice Diamond Pack, and I just was using him in like some, some viewer games, some friendly games like that. But anyway, I was able to kind of break this game open for a few more runs. The opponent went ahead and quit out of that one. So let's see where we're at on program stars up until this point. Should be right around 220, 221. So we do move up to 8-0 for this specific run. Got a couple uh, bronze card and then Justin Upton. Have 223 program stars, so 223 is pretty good at this point. 
I will be able to unlock another 30 once I win a couple more games. If I, whether it's in this run or in Battle Royale, whatever it is, I just really want to reiterate that you don't have to play one specific mode for all 10 wins. You can kind of jump around. It's good for those daily missions as well. And the reason why I wanted to get this Lou Gehrig as quickly as possible was because once the daily missions reset, more people will be able to unlock that card. I know a lot of people have been grinding this out since it came out yesterday and more people will start to unlock that card. I was really trying to sell them for right around 400,000 was I, I saw the price was sitting right around there. At the point that I was playing these games, there's already been a couple of Lou, Lou Gehrig's discovered and uh, earned, accumulated, and sold on the market. So I was pretty surprised at how quickly some other people were able to complete this. But at the same time, it did take me some time to upload some of the videos, go through and edit some of these clips that I was able to take throughout the process and try and give you guys the best possible tips to complete this quickly. In that last game, Ralph Kiner hit another no doubt home run to win it. And then in this next one, uh, the opponent left in the common pitcher, Roberto Alomar is sending an extra base hit off of the wall there. I thought that one had a chance to go out, but definitely one of the better cards in this run for me is that Roberto Alomar in the two spot. Uh, Frank Thomas is lining out to center field. That was a solid squared up ball facing this Tony Watson. This is just a silver Tony Watson card and uh, definitely effective in this event. I mean, Hall of Fame difficulty, lefties were at a premium in this event. I was using Billy Wagner and he was the only lefty that I brought into this one. So probably not the best strategy. If there was one thing I could have changed about my team was probably add in another lefty. And that may come back to haunt me later on in this run. I'm not quite sure. But uh, so far, so good. I was able to score a run there with Cal Ripken Jr. hitting a solo shot. I was able to advance Ricky Henderson to third base following that double and then get him in to score there two to nothing in the bottom of the third but this opponent was not giving up i mean he had something cooking in this one i was down to the last couple bullpen guys that i could possibly go to and that's not good because i only have uh i have mostly diamonds but i did put in stephen Wright because i wasn't sure if i was going to face him but as i get down to the bottom half of my bullpen and the last couple guys i don't really want to go to that dude especially if the opponent doesn't go to him so I have to keep that in mind as well, try and, uh, I guess, manage the bullpen in a way where I'm not going to use a specific pitcher. So I'm kind of missing one guy there. And also, I did that so that way I could get my team overall down. I figured that with these types of players, it's tough to get the team overall down. It's best to have common starters, as I went up against a lot of common starters. And it's best to have a couple guys in the bullpen that are, let's say, bronze or silver, per, potentially even common cards. And there's not really many common pitchers that you can use. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that. Because in this next game, we are 11-0. and And in the times that I've gotten uh, pretty far in these event runs, towards the end of the run when I'm at like 10-0, and 11-0, or 11-1, and something like that, I, I did notice that the opponents tend to bring in knuckleballers more often. I don't know if this guy necessarily has the knuckleball pitcher in, but he definitely had a chance to, uh, in his rotation anyway, but he definitely had a chance to take the lead in that last inning. I was able to get out of the inning and start it up with a double with Johnny Bench. I was He loaded up the bases by walking some guys, and I, unintentionally, of course. I mean, he pitched around some hitters. It was a pretty smart decision as I had Ricky Henderson coming off the bench as a pinch hitter, then Tony Gwynn up. He was able to get a shallow fly ball, but I still tried to tag up there, trying to be aggressive. I'm trying to steal in this situation and kind of do a little bit of a hit and run. I was able to get a hit and run in the previous game against uh, another really good player, and it worked out in my favor. I hit the ball to the shortstop, vacating, and uh, just wasn't able to get a big hit in this one so far. I mean, I got the double, and I was able to score a couple runs, but I really had a chance to break the game open right there with Frank Thomas. And I got thrown out a double play on just trying to move the runner up. That was kind of dumb because I had uh, Ralph Kiner coming up to the plate facing a righty. And I had two guys in scoring position. I mean, one guy in scoring position already in Ricky Henderson, but two guys on base. So then in the third inning, he's getting a seeing eye single just out of the reach of Roberto Alomar. And at this point in the game, it's not looking good. I mean, he is the home team. I'm up by two runs. But with this base hit right here to Willie Mays, that's going to put me in some trouble. I ran out of pitchers at this point, like I was talking about in the previous game. It didn't come back to haunt me, but in this one, I had to go to Stephen Wright to face Frank Thomas. I only had Billy Wagner as the other option, and I wasn't going to bring in the lefty to face Frank in that one. So I was able to get the 12-0. I just had to throw like one pitch with Stephen Wright. It's unfortunate, but uh, I did feel a little bit bad about that. But I did get Xander Bogart, so 
I got the worst possible diamond, and that might be a little bit of karma, but I was able to complete the program in its entirety. I did pick the Lou Gehrig, and I ended up selling him very quickly for 450,000 stubs. Now I'm looking at 713k. I might go ahead and sell Lefty Grove and try and get Willie Mays, depending on how many stubs I will need to unlock Willie Mays. I also want to get Lou Gehrig back once he drops in price. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully I helped you out with some tips. And until next time, guys, peace out.